Right, so in this video I want to show you how to capture the geological points and faults or lines and it's uh, a simpler process than capturing the polygons as we're just capturing lines and points which is really quite straightforward. So if we have a look in the, the legend of our Ngozi geological map sheet we can see there's a number of different options here and you'll need to do the translations. So I think this is faults and this is where other faults exist, uh, etc. So there are there are a number of different fault types, the limits of the geological extents, etc., etc. But then what we also have are a series of icons which represent points, um, and we can capture those too. All right. So what we'll do is capture a few faults to start. So we'll just zoom out a bit. I'm going to capture these. So we've got these dark ones here, faults. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll turn off our geology map, turn on the geology lines, and then go and find a line to capture. Okay, so there's a bunch up here. And if we open up the attribute table for the geological lines, you see we've also got type, and this is where we'll enter the type, whether it's a, a fault or a fault where the existence is uncertain, which is what this one is here, these slightly hashed lines. Let's start and just capture a few up here, and then we'll move down and capture some others. Okay, so we'll select that line, start editing, and to capture a new feature, we're going to use this little op odd, odd option here, which is add line feature, and it goes something like this. And actually, before I do that, what I'll do is I'm just going to change my snapping options to geology lines. Let's capture this one. Okay, so that is a fault where existence. fault where existence is uncertain. Okay, that's that's kind of a direct translation of what the, the legend says there. So you, you may want something else there depending on what the geologists are seeing. Okay, we'll do the same for this one here. And it's the same. Whoops. Okay, <laughs> I just need to go and change it in the attribute table because I pushed enter when I shouldn't have. So what you can actually do is if, if you, you capture a whole bunch that are the same type, you can just go and uh, select the text that is correct and then just go control V on your dashboard or on your, your keyboard just to copy and paste the text. So you don't have to type it in every time, but that'll, that'll be up to you how, uh, how you see uh, what's the best solution for you capturing these, these lines. But I want to just go down here where there are two different types which kind of intersect each other or or kind of run together. So there's another fault type down here. Yes, this one here where it says the extension of faults is under a covering. So I'm not too sure what that means, but we've got three different types. So this line uh, has got three different types. So let's start at the top here with the fault line. Is this a straight fault? Okay, here's a good example of why it might be under a covering. So we've got a different geological feature here. So it's possible that this fault will run underneath this geological feature. So we've got one rock type, the fault runs between the two, and then this rock type is uh, sort of over overshadowing it or overlying it. So let's start by capturing the fault. Oh, and it looks like it actually starts a bit further. So we'll go up here. and capture this piece and finish and then just call it extension of fault under a cover and then to capture a new piece we'll just snap onto the end of that digitize the new section and then right click to finish and this one's just called the fault and then we've got a little piece. And we'll say OK. And then just capture this little piece 
which is a fault. And then another one that is the same as the other two, which are extensions under cover. And then if I open up the attribute table, because I pushed enter without actually entering any values in there, I know that these two are the same as this one. So I can just right click and copy and then just paste it in there. So now I know that it's a quick way to quickly enter the data for that instead of typing it out each time. And then the fault kind of runs on for a long time. So we can now digitize this section of the fault. And keep going. And then once again pan off your your page if you if you run out of the run out of view, just pan to the next page. Pan down your screen. So this fault runs all the way through and keeps going until it gets to here. And that is a fault. And we got that section again. I wonder if it's still it's still on my 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 clipboard, so I just copied and paste, or I just pasted, which was Control V. And now there's a new fault. Now this one is where the existence is fault where the existence is uncertain. I think was the the category in the in the legend. Take it down to here. Right click. A new little piece, which is the same extension of fault under cover. Now that's such a short section that it's possible that it is also the existence of fault uncertain, but it's hard to know because it's such a short section and the the symbol cho chosen is not reflecting what's happening there. So I'll just. I think you could probably accurately assume that that was also fault where existence is uncertain, uh, but we'll just leave that to you to decide. And that's what you do. So you'd continue doing that for all of the faults. And there are quite a few. Uh, and those are the faults for Ngozi. It's not too bad, but um, it is a, a rather straightforward process. It just requires a fair amount of work and attention to detail. Right, so I'm going to stop editing the geological lines and faults. So and this time I'm not going to click save first. I'll just click on the toggle editing pen and you'll see that uh, it's going to ask you to save something if it hasn't previously been saved. So just make sure you say save and then we can move on to something else. Now, there are a number of points in the legend that are reflected by just icons. So these axes. So these various points where they appear on the map, we'll need to capture those as points. I'm not actually seeing any. Let me zoom in a bit. See if I can spot some. Is that one there? 83 degrees. Is that 83? And 80? There are some here. Little point. I think those are ones. So if I, if I zoom out to the legend, what is that one? Littage. What does that mean? Bending. Littage. Okay, so uh, let's just show you how you would do that. So what we do is uh, turn off the geological lines, select points, select the uh, toggle editing button. We're going to capture a new feature. And then we will just capture a couple points here. So we'll capture that one. And it is 
montage. And this is just exactly what it says in the legend, so I'm just going to use that. And you do that for points. And and yeah, that's that's up to you guys whether whether you're going to need the accuracy of all the points or whether the geological faults as well as formations is going to be more important. Possibly that's the points is something you can leave till last. But if it is going to be important, then you'll just need to scroll through and see wherever you see a point. There's another one there. That you digitize those as well. Okay, so that is how you're going to capture your geological features for each of these maps. Let's zoom to the full extent. And stop editing and save my edits. <laughs>